In this exercise, I'm going to introduce you to the fourth panel of options, HSL Grayscale. And these various sliders here allow you to adjust the hue, saturation, and luminance of an image on a color-by-color -color basis. These kinds of selective modifications are analogous to what you can do with a hue saturation command inside Photoshop. Remember, back in the fundamentals portion of the series, we took that model holding an umbrella and we changed the color of her sweater. And you can do that kind of thing here inside a camera raw, but you can't go as far with the effect. So you could take a blue sweater, let's say, and you can make it more cyan or more violet, but you couldn't make it orange. And the rationale is that you're trying to correct the image, not apply a special effect here inside camera raw. To that end, I've got an image open, canalboat.dng. It's found inside the 24 camera raw folder. And we're seeing the image subject to the last changes I applied to it. If you didn't save your changes for whatever reason, then you can load mine by going to the flyout menu, choosing apply snapshot, and choosing basic adjustments. And then you'll be all caught up. Now, the problem with this photograph is that we have some sort of aberrantly colored edges. For example, Notice these purples around the model's eye right here. And there's some purples leaching into her hair and along the top of her ear as well. So what I'm thinking of doing is modifying the hue and saturation of those purples to bring them more in line with the other details inside the image. That's going to change all the purples across the board, but I'm not sure that as colorful as this image is, that the purples are making an actual positive contribution. So with the HSL panel up on screen, and the hue subpanel active, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my target adjustment tool. And you can see that it has many different behaviors. Right now, hue is automatically selected because I'm seeing the hue options. And that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna take this tool. And by the way, you can either scrub it back and forth or up and down. But once you drag one way or the other, you make a kind of commitment as you're about to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag right there along this purple edge underneath her eye. I'm gonna drag over, let's say, to the right, actually. And notice what I mean by that commitment. You can see a back and forth cursor now. If I had started by dragging up and down, I would have seen an up and down cursor. Anyway, notice that by dragging to the right or up, I increased my hue values. And specifically, I nailed the purples and the magentas. And I took them up to plus 17 and plus 32. That just happens to be the results that I got. That's a little too much, actually. I'm going to take the purple's value down to plus 15, and I'm going to take the magenta's value down to plus 25, like so. And we end up dispelling some of the purple nasties there inside the face details. Not quite everything, so I'm going to switch back over to saturation. And the thing is, if I went too far with these values, then we'd end up getting some weird colors inside the coat because we do have some purple showing up here and there inside of the coat texture, as you can see. There's a lot of noise there as well, which we'll correct in a second, because all of these options work together, as you're about to discover. Anyway, I'm going to switch over to saturation, and using the target adjustment tool once again, I am going to drag, this time let's drag down instead of to the left, just for the sake of variety, and you can see that I have an up and down arrow cursor. All right, so once I release, I appear to have knocked the purples down to negative six and the magentas down to negative 17. All I really want, based on my experience with this image, is a purples value of negative 20, and then I'm going to leave the magentas alone. All right, now that doesn't quite take care of everything where this image is concerned, and I want you to have a sense of what other options you might take advantage of in case your HSL changes aren't doing everything you want them to do. For example, let's go ahead and take a look at this coat. It's just noise world inside of this jacket. So I'm going to switch over to the detail panel. And for starters, I'm going to take this color noise option. I'm going to take it way higher, up to 75. And that's going to wipe out a lot of the color noise inside of that jacket. There was copious color noise before. And then I'm going to take the luminous value up to 25. And by the way, you'll want to be, if you're working along with me and you want to see the results of your changes, You'll want to make sure that you're zoomed into 100% or higher. I'm going to leave my luminance detail set to 50 and my luminance contrast for all the good it does set to zero. And we have much smoother detail inside the jacket now. All right, now I'm going to scroll up and zoom in actually another click here to 200% so that you can see we still have this weird edge on the ear. And it's very possible, even though I was telling you that chromatic aberration tends to happen at the outskirts of the image more than the interior, more than the center of the image, that is, it's very possible even at the center of the image. These kinds of weird effects here 
are ultimately the results of chromatic aberration. So let's switch over to lens corrections. And the values that I found to work for this image were negative 50 for the red cyan fringe. And then I'll tab down here and enter five for the blue yellow fringe. And notice how that weird little purplish edge on the top of the ear has totally gone away. And we have better color inside of the eyes as well. So that's one scenario where you may find the HSL options useful. In the next exercise, I'm going to show you another really awesome use for HSL, and that's to deepen the color of a sky.